I think um, fear is a good word because that's how it started off is like, you know, whenever you feel like um, your job or profession or what you do might be um, under threat, I feel like fear was kind of the first response and like my peers and everyone at work and a lot of my friend network was kind of sending this stuff around like, you know, oh my God, like, is this going to be something that replaces what we do? Um, and as these videos have come out and they've gotten better and better, the fidelity's there, um, you're left with this question of like, well, um, is that going to replace visual effects entirely? You start to question these things, right? And I think it kind of feeds into the fear of like the unknown, because none of us really know yet um, what the future is going to be. That's the main thing. Um, but then as I kind of spoke to more and more people about it, I started to kind of change my line of questioning, um, mainly because, I mean, the biggest point is like, this technology is here to stay. So it's not going to go anywhere. Um, kind of like how, you know, 3D animation and, and the digital age with computer animation came about, you know, um, I'm sure 2D animators that were used to drawing traditionally on, on, on paper probably had the same fears and CG animation was not going to go anywhere. It was more a question of like, okay, AI is definitely going to come into this industry and how is it going to come into the industry? Um, and there's a few ways it can, <clears throat> you know, obviously there's like legal battles right now about how much it can encroach on what us as creatives can do um, and what can be given to AI. But I started looking at some of the problem areas of our industry that could be fixed with AI, more of that line of thought rather than AI is going to do exactly what I'm doing, but better and quicker and cheaper, um, which to some degree, sure, the execution might be cheaper, but I feel like at its core, like to have an idea and to have an artist's creativity, I think is irreplaceable from the stuff I've seen. Um, I've heard, you know, everything from like AI music, um, writing <clears throat> to some of the visuals from Sora. And for me, they lack a certain human touch. Like it's, for me, it's discernible. I listen to the music and I'm like, something just feels weird. Something feels off. Um, and then I was like, okay, well, I feel like if I can pick that, an audience member is going to pick that up. Um, and yeah, like I said, start to change my questioning of like, okay, there's some really cool tools, un underlying tools here that could actually enhance what we do as artists in our day-to-day -day job um, in a digital medium. Um, and the first things I started to approach was, or started to question was like, what are problem areas for, for me as a lighting artist um, that I've just learned to live with, that I've never questioned. Um, but as I kind of, well, I probably questioned them day one when I jumped into the industry and started learning, but have since just kind of learned to live with them. Um, and I've kind of gone back and been like, okay, so like big things like render time, you know, when you first start learning the art of lighting and rendering, um, you definitely, or I, I definitely didn't have the um, idea that it was going to take so long, that there was so much involved in it. There's so much, lighting is one small part of it. A lot of it is like data management, data wrangling, um, farm, farm metrics, and obviously render time. And those things, those things kind of blew my mind. I'm like, wow so as a digital artist when you're lighting you have to wait a long time to get an image back um sometimes days um and i was like well what if ai can speed that up because we already have machine learning in uh, render denoising right so that's kind of like a step towards getting render frames back um and i think more importantly, maybe the, the end goal here is to speed up our process as lighters um, so it can be as one-to-one -one as what a gaffer on a on a set would be, right? 
because they're lighting, they're moving lights, and they're seeing the results of their actions instantly. And I think that's kind of how we work as as humans. Like we have this intuition of like we do something, we see the result, and then it triggers another part of our brain to continue problem solving. Um, and for me, there's always kind of been like a bit of a disconnect there with with digital artistry um, that I've wanted to tap into more. Um, and I think some people have struggled with it that aren't familiar with maybe with what we do when they kind of peer behind the curtain and be like, oh, so what does like a digital lighter do? Or how do you get those images on the screen? And they're like, whoa, that's like, that's crazy. That's, you know, that's something oh, what I what I would do on set. Um, so I went down that kind of line of questioning and that kind of just opened up my mind to like, well, actually, there's actually quite a few, I wouldn't call them problems, but things that we've learned to deal with that could be streamlined and could make our job that much quicker, um, and that much better. Because at the end of the day, if we can speed up what we do, I think we still have the opportunity to do what we love you know it's not going to be replaced by you know a, a, a prompt in an ai algorithm you know it's going to be like oh wow okay we can iterate on this idea maybe tens to hundreds to thousands of times rather than maybe a handful of times because the process is quite slow and labor intensive and um, computationally it's quite intensive as well I'm curious, like if you were to, um, if you could describe like how much the lighting process sped up until today, getting into a big studio, they probably have strong, powerful machines, you know, they have render, uh, render farms, and all that stuff, but you're still talking that it's slow, right? And then the, the follow-up question, I think that might be quite interesting to me is to see where you think that the AI could help? Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I was about the same time as you then, so I was like Maya 4.0, you know, when I when I jumped in. And um, back then it was, I think like, it shipped with like a scanline renderer. Um, and yeah, you, you couldn't do full ray tracing, you know, that, that was like, what is that? You know, you're kind of faking reflections and you're faking shadows. Um, and over the years, we've it's kind of progressed into, or it did progress into, how do you bake out this data, right, to get it quicker? So you'd be baking out like point clouds and like shadows from lights would be pre-computed and then the render engine would do its thing, um, which was better, but still slow, right? I'm talking like this would be maybe a half a day process before your render frames even went to the farm. So they pre-compute all this data. Um, and the industry went that way, obviously, because you could then reuse that data. So you could then iterate a little quicker on it. Um, and then the big leap was obviously ray tracing and then path tracing, which is probably, you know, something that we actually implemented ray, uh, path tracing on the Jungle Book, um, which is kind of one of the first iterations RenderMan had when they um, implemented RIS um, away from their rays rendering. And, and that blew my mind then. That was like, wow, okay. So we got rid of all this pre-computed data, which took you know half a day to a day to, to pre-compute. And now we're doing things on the fly. So when I hit render, what I see is what I'm getting, right? And that time, I mean, they refer to a lot as like time to first pixel, which is kind of like the time it takes when you hit that render button to when the first pixel comes on the screen. Um, so that's now down to like maybe 30 seconds a minute, maybe anywhere from that to could be like 30 minutes, depending on the complexity of the scene, which is still a big improvement, right? Um, and that was kind of the big thing. And those renders, though, still took a while. I mean, I'm sure people are familiar with that path tracing style where it starts off really noisy and then the render engine refines, 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 um, and you get a clearer picture at the end of it. Um, and depending on the complexity of the scene, um, 
that time for that image to resolve from this noisy kind of mess to what you see as a clear image um, varies quite substantially. But it was a big leap. Um, <clears throat> and that was cool. That was something that, like, for me was a big game changer because this idea of pre-computing data was just another step that an artist had to go through, but not only go through as a step, but also had to wrangle and manage. So you kind of have to keep track of like what pre-computed data you've got, how much disk space it takes up, obviously, because disk space isn't unlimited, even at big studios, or it wasn't back then. So it it was pretty resource heavy. Um, and I think the next biggest jump for me was probably into real-time technology. Um, that's something that the VFX industry hasn't fully adopted yet, but, um, you know, it's kind of got a side branch where, um, and it's called virtual production, where a side branch of VFX is utilizing real-time technology to get filmmakers um, more involved in the creative process. Uh, when it comes to visual effects and that again blew my mind that was when i was like wow this is real time you can move a light and you see what it does instantly um and that's when my brain kind of clicked into another gear of like okay what can we do with this like this actually feels like lighting now um you know so my background's in photography so i'm used to light changing i'm used to like shooting outdoors and the sun moving and the shadows changing and um things like that which in the digital realm um you just don't have um and real time kind of gave me that and helped me kind of tap into that part of my brain where I can look at it from a photography point of view or a cinematography point of view and really tap into the art of, of lighting. I'm no longer part-time lighter, but also part-time render wrangler and part-time data manager. I'm now just, my, my brain is fully engulfed in lighting. Um, and I think there's something special to be said about that. Um, so that's kind of the big arc for me. And that's kind of where it led me to then this AI discussion of like, okay, well, real time is kind of the next step. And that's kind of like the, the cutting edge right now. And that's what everyone's kind of talking about. Well, what if we can get real time technology into the VFX pipeline? Because the, the, the thing with real time technology is yes, it's great. Yes, it's amazing. But you take a hit on fidelity, like the image you create isn't going to be as good as you know an image that takes eight hours to render um you know in real time the computer's taking a, a hit on the image quality to get you back an image quicker um and for me i was like well what if those things can be computed quicker what if we can feed that data what if ai <clears throat> can assist with that and that was kind of my next step of maybe that could be the future for us because real-time technology again is here to stay it hasn't gone anywhere um, if anything it's gotten better um and it's something i've like tried to open up other people's eyes to who, are, who have come from vfx where i'm like hey like try out this try like unreal engine out try lighting in this package and you'll see it's just a different experience altogether um you know you can get into this you know speak to other artists about it about this flow state right where you're just in this creative zone um, and you're fully fixated on what's in front of you and there's no distractions and that's something that's like rare for me as a lighting artist to get into um because you are hitting render and you're waiting you're hitting a button and you're waiting for something to change and by that time like I don't know, I'm probably got an email from work or someone's like called me or my phone's buzzing. And I'm like, I just cannot focus on this. This is like a different thing. But um, I think um, to that point of like looking at AI as an approach to how to solve maybe um, 
problem areas or areas that we're, we're suffering in or areas that artists just have run into these problems on, on a day-to-day -day basis but kind of put their hands up and be like well that's just the process right now like that's just how render engines work or that's just kind of the limits of computer hardware right now um i think that's where ai can come in um i think for me bigger picture um creatively speaking i think the end goal for us as an industry is to get as close to as possible to the filmmakers um and maybe that end goal is on set and that's where virtual production is right now it's on set with every other department um so you have like you know sound and you got costume obviously you got talent um and you've got directors and you got camera i think having visual effects on set where these creative decisions are made for me is the end goal where, where we want to be i feel like we don't want to be in another country six months down the line completing the work that was done and shot six months ago i feel like there's something lost there um a big loss create creative i'm speaking, speaking purely from a creative point of view um because when you go on these sets there's a lot of ideas and collaboration kind of going around um but sadly like vfx just isn't represented it's hard to visualize like hey we're going to have this big explosion or this cg creature replaced here but that's going to take months and months of work we're not going to be able to see that till much later right but i'm like what if these things and, and we're starting to get there with virtual production what if these things can be visualized so the filmmakers can see it and they can start to make creative decisions on um, framing and, and just ideas on where their story goes and what it should be. Um, and we're already starting to see the benefits of that now. Um, so my my way of thinking is like that's that's the end goal. And it might be it may never come and may be too far away for me to even realize, but um to see that happen on a virtual production stage was like mind-blowing i think there's something special to come out of that um but to go back to your point earlier maybe with maybe on the short short-term goals with what ai could do for us i think um is to empower artists a lot more um with what they can do in their day-to-day chat gpt was kind of a, a good example of <clears throat> having um that available on the side for artists that maybe aren't as strong in their coding side maybe you just want to fix fixate more on the creative and having chat gpt write code or scripts or little little things to help speed up your your day that otherwise you would actually have to kick to another person completely or another department um to speed that process up and i'm talking about things like um loading frames or moving data around these servers which does involve quite a bit of technical know-how um and there are positions for that and i think that's still valid i want to replace that person but what we're what we're finding now in the industry is that there's less and less of those positions um and there's more expectation on artists to have that technical side covered um, and in a perfect world the artist is going to be 50 percent you know technical 50 percent creative but what if some of the technical stuff can be then shifted to something like chat gpt to help streamline their workflow um and and i'm talking about here mainly the repetitive task, which is kind of what scripting is good for. Anything that you find yourself doing over and over and over, which could take up hours of your day, um, but you just don't have the scripting knowledge or the programming knowledge to help speed that up. Um, I think that's something that AI could really help with. And we're already starting to see it. There's already like little plugins that are starting to come into Nuke, which is a 2D compositing software. Um, I know Blender has something going at the moment, so there is a need for it. There's already like a curiosity right now in the industry as, as to like how 
chat GPT <clears throat> and an AI model that knows these languages can tap into some of the software that we are using day to day and a user who isn't familiar with coding can just write something like hey you know i want to copy this file 30 times with a different file extension each time and put it in these folders for me um, and that may take a human you know a long time but for a ai model and a script that it, it kind of puts out can be instant or you know fed to it and then the artist can continue working on what they were doing so that's kind of a and just an example in general like do you actually imagine that this before we get to the tools that are production ready and and proven and they're helping just like you're describing uh, this is already out there like for us to just like jump in and start using yeah. do you think that it at least this text to image tool uh you would use in your creative process right now i haven't found it to be useful for for me in my creative process um particularly for me in lighting i like to look at a lot of reference i like to specifically look at reference that grounded in reality um, i like to look at photography and cinematography and ai just doesn't give me that yet i'm sure it will um but for a lot of the a lot of the work that i do a lot of it is looking at reference or things that have been shot previously or looks that have been developed previously that a client um, or filmmaker kind of wants to hit. So AI hasn't really um, found its way into my workflow. But I have been looking into doing short films and um, experiment more with Unreal Engine and, and how that works with animation. And what I am finding is you know, I'm only one person. So, you know, if I want to storyboard something and I want to have ideas of like concept art for something, I am starting to dabble with that of like, okay, I have this idea for a short film, but I don't have the crew or the budget right now, but I kind of want to visualize it. I'm not the great, the greatest sketcher in the world. So I have started to dabble in that. And this is kind of more of my personal um, creative process of, I want to see um, images back <clears throat> and what AI can give me. And that's been, and I feel like that could be, that's what I'm finding as well is like smaller productions or indie type productions um, are using AI a lot right now because they don't have the crew or the budget to really have all these areas where you traditionally have storyboard artists and um <clears throat> things like that so that's kind of been an interesting step for me but ultimately the things that the main reason why i don't use it is because what i do professionally we need control over every aspect of the image every aspect of the image gets art directed um, and that's something we go in and, and and iterate on and control and what AI doesn't have yet is that fine control. You know, you put in a prompt, okay, here's a dog in a park um, at sunset, and it gives you back maybe like a couple of iterations of what it thinks that should look like. And you refine and you refine, but in the in a professional setting, you'll get a lot of feedback um, over what that dog's fur looks like, how it reacts to the light, the color of the light, um, the framing, the shaping, all these kinds of things where we get into the next level of like, okay, you can put a drawing up, which is kind of what you do during school, right? Like you learn how to draw, but as you work your way through the industry, you realize, okay, I need to be able to hit all this feedback because I need full control of this image. Um, and how to get there. And I feel like that's what AI doesn't have yet. So that's why it doesn't really make its way into my uh, my professional creative process is because I need absolute control, um, which I feel like, yeah, it's just not there yet. Very quick question, like, can you spot that an AI lighting is wrong? 
some things it depends it's really like it's a that's an interesting question. Um, from the stuff I've seen on Sora and OpenAI, excuse me, on OpenAI, um, some of it yes, and then some of it no. Some of it was deceptively good. Um, but on other things that I've seen, a lot of things with like generative fill um, on like Photoshop, for instance, um, there are there are things that AI overlooks. And a lot of it comes down to like reflections and the accuracy of reflections and how things just generally behave through a lens. Um, but I will say it's getting harder and harder. The things that I spot generally are um, when AI is kind of visualize a human um, or in, a, in a certain pose uh, and certain like features and the way those are lit can generally kind of there's something just off about it but it's it's getting really good uh, i will say it's overall yeah the fear has come down a little bit um i think i think and the thing it's really just because i think people are just starting to accept the fact that it isn't going to go anywhere um it is here to stay um now that people are seeing what it can do i think a lot of the discussions have been around what can it do? Like I had a discussion with some of my peers at work at, at DreamWorks the other week about kind of what we've just been speaking about of like, what can it do in our process? Like what, what could it do for us to get these images back quicker? Or what can we do to incorporate it into lighting? And what would that look like? Um, yeah, it may mean, I think on one hand, it may mean a smaller lighting team because if you can get through these tasks quicker it may mean smaller teams um but it's definitely not replacing i think people are kind of are a little fearful but also a little excited by like oh what could my job or what could my day-to-day -day process look like with open you know with ai in it um but you're right it it yeah, I think it, it has it has settled somewhat, but there's still a lot of questions out there. A lot of people are still questioning, like, what would this look like? Um, what does my job look like? You know, um, and <clears throat> my angle on it has always been a little bit more proactive of like, well, what could it look like? And if this is what we want as artists, then um, it can look like this rather than kind of being dictated by the technology of what it should be how much technical do you have to be in order to unleash the art of lighting yeah um it is quite a technical skill i think lighting itself as an art form is not and we've seen it like you know lighting's been around for forever um you know from like painting <clears throat> to concept art to digital art where it is now obviously cinematography um and you think about those those skills like cinematography and painting and, and concept art they're very creative not very technical um but digital lighting yes it is i'd say it's 50 50 it's 50 percent technical and 50 percent creative um because the thing about digital lighting that is so separate to those other disciplines is that we're having to kind of feed the render engine all the other upstream departments work so we're having to like get animators animation in get layouts cameras and sets in uh effects departments particle work and simulations in and then on top of that we're having to light it so you have to have this really kind of broad understanding and knowledge of um what every other department's doing generally um and how to kind of best give that to a renderer to then give us an image back um because the end of the day we're still kind of pushing the limits of what computers can do where we're pushing you know memory limits and speed limits and um you kind of have to have a knowledge of um 
what's going on under the hood um, to kind of drive the vehicle, right? So you kind of like a part-time mechanic, you kind of know what the computer is doing and what it's capable of, but you also need to be able to drive it. Um, to distill it down to what's necessary, would you find it like better to like focus on like on the art or or the Unreal Engine as a as a tool in order to achieve confidence that we could grow as lighting artists? Mm, good question. I think the way I approach lighting is just generally with like a sensibility with the thought in the back of my head of like. <clears throat> I want to get this done as streamlined as possible with the best looking image as possible. So what I want to cover is, and a good example would be, you know, how to light a scene with as few lights as possible. Because if you give that scene to 10 different artists, um, they're going to light it 10 different ways. That's just generally how human nature works, right? Um, and if no one's had any hands-on experience with lighting. Those 10 different ways can vary wildly. It could be like, I'm going to put 100 lights in the scene to I'm going to put one light in the scene. And my approach is going to be like, well, I want to give people the understanding of why we like this way creatively and also both technically as well. Um, so that when those scenes are kind of given out, the 10 ways of doing things um, hopefully people use a common approach but it's still given the creative freedom to light the way they want to light um it's kind of my way of looking at it because yeah there, there there is there are you know there are limits on how many lights you can put in a scene for instance um the thing, the thing about computers is it kind of gives you infinite possibilities um, that goes with any discipline, right? Like, there's no reason you can't put down a hundred lights. But if you turned up to a sound stage, you don't have a hundred lights at your disposable uh, at, at your disposal. So, um, real world gaffers and cinematographers don't light with that, uh, partly because of budget, but also partly because of look and and creative choices. Um, so there is still, you know, I guess my point is, people that light on set are still bound by the same, you can call them technical limitations, right? Um, some of them may be budget or some may just be like electrical wiring. We can't get that much power. We don't have those lights on hand. Um, and they're bound by the same limitations kind of we are as well on the computer. Like we can't put that many lights there. We just don't have the computational power. So um, yeah, my, my approach is, is really one of like, Again, 50-50, how can we get that creative look, but how can we get there um, see as, as quick as possible, but fewer lights as possible, and what parameters you do need and what you don't need. And those parameters are, are kind of pivotal in the game engine um, as to how fast or slow your scene will run. So yeah, it's it's a it's a similar approach, and that's kind of how I look at it.